Hello, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and today we are looking at Modulators 21 by K Devices. Modulators 21 is, at the time of this recording, six devices for Ableton Live using Max for Live that enable some really, really cool modulation options within Ableton that you can assign to any Ableton device, effect, synthesizer, and third-party stuff if uh, it can be automated. There are six devices within Modulators 21, Knorr, LFO with an exclamation point, LFO, sources, targets, and voltage and MIDI. The only one that we will not be talking about is voltage and MIDI. So check that out if you want to uh, via the link in the description. Each one of Modulators 21 has a slightly different flavor. Some generate complex LFOs, some generate complex relationships between modulation, and some of them even work through like step sequencing of modulation. Modulation is the heart of literally every cool patch, um, whether or not it's an envelope doing something to a filter or volume of a synthesizer, whether or not it's the chorus of something um, moving through slight pitch variations to give something a richness and timbre, or some kind of crazy wavetable thing going on. Every synthesizer worth its shit usually has some form of LFO. Sometimes they're complex, sometimes they're simple. So to get into this, let's talk first about what an LFO is. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. A high frequency oscillator is one that exists in audio rate, and it's the kind of thing that makes the sounds that we associate with synthesizers. So a sine wave, triangle wave, saw wave, or you know, like a wavetable or single cycle waveform, these operate and cycle at audio rate between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz so that we can hear them. An LFO operates a below audio rate, which we usually assign to some parameter of our synthesizer to create movement. Not all modulation needs to be below audio rate. In fact, audio rate modulation is awesome, but complex LFOs really can create some amazing movement within your compositions, whether or not you're assigning them to effects or synthesizers. So with that said, Traditional LFOs come in the same shapes that you associate with audio waveforms that a regular subtractive synthesizer can put out. So sine wave, triangle wave, saw wave, and square wave. Sometimes we'll have a sample and hold or random wave as well. When you assign one of these to a parameter, you move that parameter automatically according to the LFO's rate, depth, and shape. So you might set a ramp up LFO to associate with the volume of something on a quarter note, and you would get sort of a side chaining pump. Or you might associate a sine wave LFO with the pitch of something and get a crazy tidal sort of wonky drunk pitch thing like you're hearing right now. LFOs can be assigned to anything that a synthesizer or effect has access to in terms of automation. For instance, the wave position here on this wavetable synthesizer. So here's the first one we're going to talk about, called Knorr. Knorr is four separate recordable modulation things. We're going to assign this real quick to our position of our wavetable. So you're going to hear it jumping around. You can have Knorr step through each one of those things that you're seeing in front of you, and you can set a stepped value to each one. You can also smooth between those values, which we're doing now. You can see it smoothing between them, which is really, really cool. So it's a step sequencer, but then each step can be recorded with a series of movements. So it's a animated step sequencer and you can actually introduce chance to each one of these steps uh, possibility of occurring, which is really, really cool. Like I said earlier, you don't have to just assign these two things like cutoff frequency or wavetable position. It sounds great on effects as well. So let's uh, let's make some music with this, shall we?
really is a smooth step sequencer. Knorr actually really, really shines, but the ability to uh, have each step have its own movement and then add chance to each step is pretty wild. Uh, just the possibilities are insane, just like with everything that we're gonna be looking at today. This kind of modulation is fantastic. Okay, next up is LFO. LFO is a single oscillator LFO. It's kind of like the baby version of the LFU, but it is really, really powerful. We have a continuously morphing wave shape, which we just assigned to the second cutoff frequency there. And we can sweep through it, we can automate it, and we can assign another LFO to it. And we can get in between the different wave shapes. So here we're gonna assign the second LFO to my favorite parameter, squeeze, which cr instantly creates really, really complex shapes. On the left, you're seeing the output LFO. You can adjust the min and the max for every single one of these. If things are too complex, you can also smooth them out. This kind of complex function generation you get from mixing LFOs together uh, with things like squeeze and folding uh, provides really, really awesome results in terms of modulation, stuff that you will not get from the default Ableton LFOs. Wonderful. Next up, LFU. Okay, so this one actually has, hold on, we're gonna get this. There we go, a little bit of unison there. Yeah, we're good, okay. What else are we doing? Okay, cool, let's look at the LFO. So this one actually has two shapes. Wait, oh, I guess we're gonna assign, hold on a second. There we go, okay, now it's on the frequency so we can actually hear it. Okay, so uh, these are two LFO shapes, just like you saw in LFO, and uh, we can add them together or multiply them together, subtract them from each other, divide them or multiply. I think I already said multiply, but anyways, you can see as we move through these that we get a completely unique shape over on the right, which is really, really cool. Again, any uh, sync value is available if you want that, and uh, I do. Min and max is available for each shape. And then things get really crazy when you start selecting different math functions for these, like we're doing right now. Look at that shape go, look at that. It's really fun to generate super, super complex modulations of modulation and then smooth them out a little bit. Also, the fun thing about using external LFOs in Ableton is that it animates things as opposed to just uh, statically uh, displaying them like it would be if you use an internal modulator. Being able to create complex function generation with your LFOs and assign it to anything you want in Ableton is really, really cool. And I'm hoping you're starting to understand like why. All right, next up is targets. Targets is pretty simple to explain. You have six different 
destinations for uh, each one of those little slots there. That source dial moves between them and you can see over on the right what happens. There's a min and a max. And as you turn the source thing, you can smooth between them. You can actually delay between them in note values. So that source thing is gonna be able to control every single output destination here. And one of my favorite uses for it is on effects. So we're gonna assign each one of the output things here to the effect, the echo effect in Ableton. And we're gonna adjust the min and the max and the smooth and all the other stuff we have available to us to create basically a one-stop shop for modulating this loop. This is like a macro control on steroids. It's absolutely wild. The bend control will actually change between logarithmic and exponential curves between the movements, by the way. So I would consider targets a just massive macro control for all kinds of performance, crossfading, pretty much anything you can think of that you might want to all shift at once with one control. Cool. All right, next up is one called Sources. So the way Sources works, and uh, we'll get there in just a second, you'll see it on screen. It's actually gonna do uh, the math functions, the comparative addition, subtraction, multiplication, division that we've seen in the LFO device, but it's gonna do it standalone. So you can actually use the built-in um, Ableton Live devices, the uh, envelope follower, the shaper, and the built-in Ableton LFO if you want to put these three sources together and create the same kind of complex modulation pattern that we did in the uh, LFOs before. So it's a one-stop shop for the kind of things that like Make Noise Maths does or some Eurorack stuff does. It has min, max, and smoothing just like the other LFOs do too. So if something gets out of control, you can smooth it or attenuate it or lift the floor of its modulation. together what we have learned about these devices and modulation into one final jam session. I'm going to keep quiet, but if you have any questions about this, please put them in the comments below, and I hope you enjoy.
Time to... Time to... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Check the links in the description for how to get Modulators 21 for yourself. Thank you for K Devices for sponsoring this video. Yeah, thanks for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.